Hello everybody, welcome. Today I'm going to be discussing what I think about different supports in League of Legends at the current moment as of patch uh, 6.21. I've had several people ask me, well, which supports do I think are the best in this patch? Why are they the best? Um, I've had people ask like, well, I'm a new player, which support should I get? Which runes should I get? Um, what are some tips for how I can improve? Um, all of that. And so I've made a, um, a Google Doc here and I'll share it in the description of this video so you can see it anytime you want. And I will try to um, update it with every patch if anything changes as well. I suspect a lot of things are going to change in the preseason, but I've said all of this stuff at one time or another in various videos, but I just wanted to compile it all in one place for you here. Hopefully this will be like a 10 minute video or something. Now I don't have a lot of fancy graphics and things, so I apologize for that. You know, my video editing is still pretty low. I've been saying for months I was going to get better video editing, um, but I will keep an updated tier list with this. And like I said, I will... Um, post a link to this and all of my support videos so that you can always access and see what I think about these. Um, so let's just get into them here real quick. You know, like I said, when I master video editing, when the semester calms down, maybe for winter break or something a little bit, then I can make, you know, graphics and show you some footage and things like that. But um, for now, I'm just going to do this and then I'm going to get to producing um, some more high quality content, some more League, and I might do um, some more Total Warhammer tonight. I know I've neglected that a little bit, but anyways. Um, okay, so who are the S-Class champions? So You'll see this in other tier lists, and how I define this, how I'm ranking these champions, is how confident can you feel picking this champion in champ select, given various levels of knowledge that you have about the team. So one thing that's really important to keep in mind, when you're picking your champion, you have to understand what you know and what you don't know about your team, and you need to know matchups. So that means if you're first pick, and you know absolutely nothing about their team, it's very dangerous to pick something like um, Leona, for example. Or it's very dangerous to pick something like Zyra if you're first pick and you don't know anything. Because they have very strong counters, right? Like, Janna is very good against Leona. She's very popular to play. Tom Kinch is very good against Leona. If they have a very aggressive jungler like Lee Sin that could come down and camp your lane, that's very good against Leona. Um, so there's, you know you should limit your champion pool based on where you are in the pick order. So you need to have just a very small handful of champions. You can pick up at the very top that are going to be good into almost every matchup. And you can pick those, you know, first or second pick when you don't know a lot of information about your team and you don't know a lot of information about the other team. Um, and so my champions that I think I would feel comfortable picking very early on with very limited information are Janna, Alistar, Nautilus, and Tom Kench. And let me talk about why. Let me go down here, and as I go through these picks, I'm going to explain why, I think, as well. So I have qualities of a strong support here. And these are basically ranked, they're all important, but I think that they're ranked from top to bottom in the most important aspects. I try to do that. Now, some of these are arguable, you know, whether it should be three or four, you know, that's debatable. But these are all things that you ideally want in a support, right? So you want a support that can play well from ahead or from behind. you got to keep in mind that... If you're trying to climb and you've spent a lot of time in a specific elo, so let's say you've spent 300 games in gold, you know, you have to keep in mind that you're going to be behind probably at least 50% of the time. Just statistically, you're playing with random people, you know, there's a good chance that half of those games, at least two of your lanes are going to fail, right? Even if it's not your lane most of the time, there's a decent chance other lanes are going to fail or whatever. So you need to be able to play from behind. So if you play champions that are really good when they're ahead, like those hardcore engaged champions like Leona, for example, but you fall really far behind, that's bad because if you hardcore engage and you don't have any escapes, uh, then it's going to be really hard to come back into the game. So you need a champion that can play well from ahead and from behind. And I'll talk about what that means with each champion that I pick here in just a second. Um, another thing, you need to be able to make plays. Now those can be defensive plays or those can be offensive plays, but you need to have a meaningful impact on the game. You need to understand, okay, here's a certain situation, here's what I can do in that situation, and I'm going to do it, and I'm going to be effective. I'm going to help my team win. So this is a major problem with Soraka, right? So Soraka is a very good support in the right circumstances, and I have her lower than a lot of other people might have her. She's kind of in my, uh, my B class list here. So good in some circumstances, but not in a lot. And the reason is she has a really hard time making plays. So she can't CC anyone unless you catch them in your your silence or something. Um, she doesn't have a lot of escapes. She doesn't have a lot of defensive capabilities. The only way she can make plays is to heal people and run away, which is something. But she just really can't roam and make things happen. It's just really hard to make things happen with her. So you need to be able to make plays as a support either defensively or offensively. Multiple forms of CC, this is very important. Like you need to have a bunch of different ways that you can crowd control people because one of the major 
you know, strengths of a really good support is they can lock people up either offensively or def defensively. So people like Bard, they have two forms of support, right? Like he has his ultimate and he has his Q, but they're both pretty conditional. You have to hit the ultimate. It doesn't, people can't hit them while they're CC'd. Um, you have a slow from your Q, but it only stuns if you hit another person. So they're kind of conditional, but he does have CC. Where someone like Soraka is very low on CC, Thresh has CC, but once again, it's conditional. You have to be able to hit the hook. It's pretty hard to hit that on good players. Um, and he does have the flay, which is pretty good. And he does have his box. Thresh has other problems I'll talk about here in a second, but you just want to make sure that a lot of your supports have multiple forms of CC. So if it's something like a, a Lux, some people like Lux support, well, she really only has a snare or something like Morgana. She really only has her Q. She can CC people with her ult also, but it's just not nearly as much CC as these top tier champions can bring. Now, Tom Kench is low on the CC compared to some of these other ones, but we'll talk about him in a second why I think he's strong. So... Can play well from ahead, can play well from behind, has multiple forms of CC. Very forgiving mechanics. Do not play very difficult mechanics like champions to play that have very low forgiveness. So Zyra is one of these. Now her raw power, I have her up here in the A class, but she's one of the champions that I'm talking about. Um, she's not forgiving at all. Like if you get caught, you're dead. She has no escapes. She has no heals. If you get chunked out in lane, she's not going to be able to heal herself up. She has no shields. Um, she's not tanky. So if you're out of position with Zyra, you're screwed. You're going to die, probably. So that's one of the problems, and that's what brings some of these down that could be S-class like Zyra because she's so dangerous, although she has a lot of power. That's why she's down just a little bit, um, even though you'll see her a lot in Worlds and she has a high win percentage. Um, you know, Unless you're really, really good at positioning and your team is constantly fighting team fights and you're not going to get caught out in skirmishes, um, then she could be a problem. So... Forgiving mechanics, escapes, heals, tanky, just something where if you're out of position or you're having to go into a hot, dangerous situation, you might be able to survive and not die. Good roaming. This is something else that's very important. A lot of times winning the game is not about winning your lane, it's about winning all of the lanes. And it's very important to keep that in mind. So just because you can play something that's very oppressive in lane doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to translate into good roaming. Zyra is an example of that. Once again, I love Zyra. I don't mean to harp on her too much here, but it's really hard to roam with her, right? Because if you get caught out in the river, once again, you have no escapes. So you're going to die most likely. Um, so someone who has really good roaming um, is able to impact middle lane. They're able to get deep wards in the jungle. They're able to help the jungler invade if it comes to that. I don't like jungle invades, but you can do it if your team wants to do that. Um, so roaming is very important, especially in that mid game. Once all of the tier one towers go down, it's important to be able to move to different places and make plays to make things happen. So roaming is very important. Wave clear is very important. That's something people don't think about a lot, but especially in those losing games where you're just trying to survive and hold on a little bit longer to help your scaling kick in, um, you need to be able to clear those waves. They can't get to your tower. So it's really important to just clear out those minions and just make sure that you can protect your tower in a meaningful way. And finally, and this is something that a lot of people don't think about, and I know this might be you know, not very sexy, not very fun, but you need to play things that you can coordinate with your team well with. This is why Bard and Thresh are so far down my list, because your team has to coordinate with you. They have to actually take the lantern. You can throw the best lantern, throw it right on their face, but if they don't click on it, it's going to be just about worthless. Same thing with Bard. You can throw an awesome ult, but if no one follows up on it, then that's going to be a problem. Or you can do an awesome magical journey, but if people don't take the magical journey, they don't know what it does or they're afraid to take it and you take it and you die, that's not going to be good. So it's really important that you have skills and things that your allies are going to understand and they're going to help. Now, Tom Kinch is a little, he's a little dicey with this one because a lot of times, if you watch my Tom Kinch videos, people will spit themselves out into bad situations. They'll say, I don't understand. Like, I didn't know I could spit myself out, and so I just spit myself back out and died. Or I totally thought that I had that, so I spit myself back out and tried to fight again. And it's super annoying as Tom Kench. But that's something where if your team's not on board, if they don't understand what's going on, then your you know your W can be kind of worthless if they spit themselves right back out into danger. So it's important to take that into consideration when you're picking a champion that it's easy to coordinate with your team or relatively easy. It's not going to be really hard for them to figure out what's going on and what they need to do. Okay, so how do some of these S-class champions, and I'm not going to read off all the champions in great detail, but I'll spend a lot of time on the S, like a minute or two here, and then I'll just work my way down and explain some of you know the strengths and weaknesses of some of these other ones. Okay, so Janna, number one support right now, I think, by a long shot. Now, the reason she is number one is because, first of all, 
She's easy for people to understand, right? They know if you blow people back or they know if you're channeling your ultimate, they need to walk in there and they're going to heal up and it's going to be safe. Or they know that you can tornado people, save them. That's a good thing. It doesn't require too much interaction with your teammates, right? And um, she scales with the enemy AD carry. This is what makes her very unique compared to other supports because her shield gives actual AD. And that means when they get critical strike or they get faster attack speed or anything like that, then they're just going to be doing even more damage because you give them AD. This is very different from something like a Nami E, which adds a slow and a little bit of damage that scales with Nami's AP. You're not going to be able to get a lot of AP with Nami most of the time, so it's going to have virtually no scaling. But the Janna shield, you don't have to have any AP, you don't have to have anything fancy, you just level up your shield, and it's going to get stronger as the game progresses according to the scaling of your AD carry. So she scales harder than almost any other support in the game because of that. It's a very unique aspect to her. She's very forgiving, right? So she's very fast. She gets a passive, like... I don't even know, like 15 to 20% move speed, a lot. So that means you can go ward areas that might be unsafe for other supports, but because you're so fast and because you can use your tornado to dis disengage, that allows you to ward more unsafe areas. It also allows you to go and try to help people. So if your jungler is getting invaded, you can run up and try to tornado and CC and get them out of a bad situation without dying yourself. Whereas if you run up there with like an Alistar or something like that, and you try to get people out, try to headbutt people away, you're putting yourself in danger and you just might die. So Janna is able to get in a hot situation and get out better than almost any other support. She's great at playing ahead because of the scaling that I just mentioned. She's also great at playing behind because she can shield towers um, <clears throat> and she can peel people away with her ult. So she's very good at disengaging. So she's good when she's ahead. She's good when she's behind. Um, she's good at peeling. She's got a ton of CC. Um, her shields get really huge with the um, all those plus shielding things, so the Mikhail's and the Ardent Sensor. That gets really big, so you can shield people from things like a Zed Ultimate, and they might actually live through it. Um, no other support's going to get a shield that big. Maybe Karma, but most other supports won't get a shield that big. Um, she's very forgiving. She's very safe, that I just described. Uh, she's very good at roaming because she's very fast. So she can afford to go up and try to CC people, and if they catch her out in the river, she's probably going to get away. So it's very low risk to go try to roam. Um, so she's good at almost everything here. She doesn't have the best wave clear, but if you charge a tornado at the tower and it hits a bunch of the creeps, it's going to buy a lot of time for everyone else to um, clear the wave. So she gets pretty much all the criteria here. She's very good at it. The only thing that she's not good at is engage. So she's not good at charging in making plays in that way she's just good at supporting other people at charging so she's not going to get a lot of kills in lane probably and she's not going to make a lot of like very obvious mvp plays but she is extremely extremely strong and she's relatively easy to pick up like you can be a decent janna and just pick her up so if you're new to the game you can make a very high impact on the game and just be a relatively new janna but she also has a very high skill cap so she's very rewarding to master because you can stop a lot of plays with their tornado like lisa and q's when he tries to go into you or um zach trying to engage on you or shivana trying to engage on you um she's very good or tristana trying to jump on you she's very good at stopping things and it feels very cool it feels very satisfying when you stuff people like that it's very fun um so she's great if you're new, and she's really fun and rewarding and very powerful if you're experienced with Janna as well. So I highly recommend trying out Janna at any elo. Alistar, once again, good at almost everything. He's very tanky, and he has a good heal in lane. So if you take a couple of trades you shouldn't take, um, it's okay. Like if they hit you a couple of times when you're just kind of learning him, it's fine. Um, he has great CC. So he's got his Q, can knock people up. W, can knock people away. You can flash Q into somebody and knock them back. He has one of the best all-ins in lane. I mean, if you flash Q and knock someone back in your jungler and your laner, they're dead. Um, so very powerful, very good scaling. He's excellent at roaming. Um, he can definitely make plays. His wave clear is okay. It's a little suspicious. Um, very easy to coordinate with teammates. They know what it means. You go in, you combo somebody, it's time to fight. They know what that means. Um, so it's very easy to understand. One of the only problems with Alistar is he doesn't have a reverse gear. So if you go in and your teammates don't follow you, then there's a high chance you could die. Um, similarly, you can't save people in hot situations as much as someone like Janna, because if you headbutt in to knock someone away, you're setting yourself up to potentially get caught out. So um, he still is very strong. He has engage where Janna doesn't have engage. So... He's very powerful if your team needs to lock down a high threat target. He's very good against assassins because they can't kill him and he can lock him down. So if they have someone like a um, LeBlanc and you can Q him when she 
tries to dash onto somebody. Um, or they have someone like a Leona that really wants to hard engage. Um, Thresh, if they have an Ash and you just need to soak that Ash arrow, he's great. He can take the hit. He can ult out of it. So very, very powerful in different ways from Janna. Nautilus, very similar to Alistar, right? So super powerful, very tanky. He has a shield. He doesn't have a heal. Um, multiple forms of engage. So you can hook people and engage. You can ultimate people and engage. Um really good wave clear with his e on waves um it's also good at slowing people down so he's just mr engage auto attack has a free stun on it so he has four different forms of cc he's extremely tanky he has an undodgeable lockdown fairly long range ultimate um he's excellent and he has an escape so you can actually use your hook to get out of bad situations so let's say you're sitting around and the jungler shows up and your ad carry has some kind of escape jumps out of there and you need an escape, you can just hook the wall behind you and get away. So he does have that reverse gear that Alistar lacks, and that's why I play Nautilus a lot in the current meta over Alistar, although they're both quite good. Um, so one of his only real weaknesses are, I guess he's a little bit squishier than some of the other uh, tank supports on the list, um, but he's quite strong. Now, things like Tom Kinch and Morgana are very good against him because they can stop his uh, his ultimate but those champs are either not very good in the case of Morgana. She's okay, but she has a lot of problems. And Tom Kinch is very hard for a lot of people to play. So if you're forcing them to play Tom Kinch, you're usually in a good position. So Nautilus, very, very good. You can pick him early with confidence. Very strong. Um, Tom Kinch. Uh, I like Tom Kinch a lot. I understand that it's really hard for a lot of people to play Tom Kinch. He's got like a 45% win rate or something. Um, and the key problem is you have to know when to eat allies and you have to know when to eat enemies most of the time you should save allies but tom kinch is so unique because he saves people from anything it doesn't matter if they're cc'd it doesn't matter if they're out of position you can almost always save people and get out and this is so good in solo queue because how many games can you remember where you get you lost the game because you have this one guy that just keeps getting caught out he's elisa and he keeps trying to go in and do these fancy kicks on people um or he just keeps hooking bad people um if he's you know, Blitzcrank or whatever, or this AD carry that just doesn't understand engage ranges and just keeps getting caught out by Vi or whatever. It happens all the time in solo queue. People just get caught out and die, and that's the end of the game. You know, 40 minutes into the game, someone gets caught out. It doesn't matter how much gold you have a lot of the times. If someone gets caught, you're probably going to lose the game because everyone else is going to pile in to try to save them, and everyone's going to die, and that's going to be it. That's the story of many games, right? I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. So Tom Kinch erases that. Someone gets caught out, save them run away so that's the main reason you pick tom kinch so if they have a lot of cc like an ash a morgana bind a vi um just really hard cc that's going to lock down people out of position he's excellent um he's tanky in lane he's got some healing so he can take a lot of poke himself uh he has really good um roaming with his ultimate as well so you can just call your jungler in around golems if you're on blue side i think that's blue or purple i can't remember you can call in your jungler just be very far out of ward range and just warp right in behind people. Most people, especially at lower elos, won't suspect it. So you can just warp right in, get a lot of easy kills. Or let's say you win a team fight um, up near the enemy base. You take their inhibitor, you want to rotate down to Baron, go down there with the jungler and get it started with his ultimate. So he's very, very good at roaming and making plays. So I like that. One of his weaknesses is that he doesn't have hard lock CC. So if they have a Katarina or just something that you really need to stop. You really need to lock him down and kill him. They have a Jinx that's out of control. He doesn't have CC for that. So he's really good at saving people. He's really good at roaming around, but he's not really good at locking down and stopping high priority targets in the same way that Alistar and Nautilus can do. So I like Tom Kinch. You can pick him early. He doesn't have terrible matchups, um, but there are some limitations with him, right? Okay, so a couple of the A-class champions. I don't want this video to be too long. I realize it's about 20 minutes already. Um, and I don't want it to be too long, but I want to give you thorough information. And you can always skip around and see what you want to talk, see what you want to listen to. But um, I really like Zyra. She's got an awesome, very strong laning phase. Tons of damage. You're going to win the lane almost every time if you play Zyra correctly. The only problem is that she uh, doesn't... She doesn't roam very well because she can get caught out so easily. She has no escape. She's extremely slow. She's not tanky. None of the items, well, some of the items will give her some health, but realistically, 
if anyone ever catches her, she's dead. So you have to have excellent, excellent positioning and it limits what you can do. So even if you have excellent positioning, you can't get the same kind of deep wards that someone like Janna can get. You can't go try to save people that are constantly out of position like Janna or Tom Kinch can because you're just going to die yourself if you do that. So even if you play Zyra very well, a lot of times she, it can be really hard to convert winning lanes into winning games in the mid game because solo queue was so chaotic and people are just constantly making bad decisions and um, out of position and she doesn't do very well in that environment if you have a strong team that knows what they're doing and they're going to be in position to make plays oh she's excellent then so i think in higher elo she gets a lot better but in those lower chaotic elos I would pick with caution and you want to make sure also they don't have assassins so it's very important that they don't have assassins if you pick zyra because if they pick something like zed or leblanc or something like that and you have zyra they can kill you anytime they want in the mid to late game so be very very careful so i would only pick zyra third pick at the earliest once you get you know two or three picks from the enemy um and really more safely fourth or fifth pick but she can be extremely powerful in the right situation Nami is very powerful. She's not good against assassins, so she has the same problem that Zara has. She can get caught out and killed by assassins very easily, but she might be a little bit safer than Zara um, because she has a heal and because she has a little bit more disengage with her wave um, and she can speed herself up and she has a bubble. So she's a little bit safer, um, but she still has problems with um, you know, heavy mobility assassin type of champions, but she's very, very powerful in lane. Once again, so you can totally dominate people with your wave in lane, but the problem is she doesn't have a lot of kill pressure on her own. You can bubble and maybe your AD carry follows up. But once again, that falls into the AD carry has to understand what's going on and can follow up. And a lot of people will follow up with the bubble, but sometimes they don't. So that is a risk. Whereas Zyra, you know, regardless of what your AD carry does, you're going to do a lot of damage. If you hit them with a the root, you can almost kill people solo in lane with Zyra currently. Um, but Nami does have a lot of pressure. She has a heal, so that scales pretty well into the late game with the shielding items that you can get. Um, and she's very good. Nami's very, very good. I would almost feel comfortable picking Nami into the enemy team as long as you feel confident they're not going to have too many assassins, whereas you're going to be able to get away. But she has great lane pressure, but at lower elos, remember, a lot of people just miss wide open CS. So sometimes it can feel like you're completely dominating lane. You're like, yeah, we're going to be up 20 CS. And then you just look at the scoreboard and you're like, what the heck, we're even because your AD carry just missed a bunch of open CS. So just keep in mind that you can do a lot of pressure in lanes, but, you know, a lot of times lower elo players will not be able to convert that into extra CS and she's probably not going to get a ton of kills in lane unless you have an AD carry that's just really on it and following up on your bubbles and you're hitting your bubbles and things like that. So she's good, but she doesn't, I don't know. She's just a little bit less safe than some of these top tier picks and her CC is a little bit harder to hit and she just doesn't quite scale as well as some of them. Uh, but she's still a good choice. Sona, very similar. Sona is excellent at team fights in the late game. If you have, um, champions like Cannon, champions like Fiddlesticks, Katarina, things that want to hold people in place and just blow them up. She's awesome. She's very, very good with MF in lane because she has very heavy poke and she can hold them in place where they're old while MF channels. So very powerful. Has the same problem as Aranami though, whereas if she gets caught out, she's going to die. She's relatively slow. She's very squishy um, and she doesn't have much CC at all outside of her ultimate. So she has a lot of auras, a lot of power in team fights, but you can't be the one that gets caught by anything. So if they have mobile assassins and they're gunning for you, it's a big problem, but she is quite powerful. Okay, next one, Karma. So Karma is very powerful. You see her in pro play quite a lot because she speeds people up, but this requires coordination from your team, right? They have to know, okay, we're all going to engage. We're all gathered up, you know, ultimate E, everyone runs in, make an awesome play. It doesn't always happen in solo queue, right? So a lot of times people are split pushing, just doing their own thing. Um, I would say I would still pick her if you have an Olaf on your team because she's very good at speeding people into fights and Olaf's very good with that. Um, so I think she's powerful. She does have some poke in lane. She doesn't have a heal for your um, for your ally though. She can heal herself with a um, an ultimate plus W, but she can't heal the AD carry if the AD carry gets poked out by someone like a Zyra or a Nami or a Sona. Um, so she can be good in the laning phase. She has decent scaling. Um, she's fast in the end game. She does have some CC with her W, but it's delayed. So she's still going to have a problem with people like Katarina, LeBlanc, Jinx, just all of these high damage, high priority targets. She can't lock down CC them in the same way that Alistar and Nautilus can. But she can catch people out with a delayed CC. So she's good if you need a team that has to run people down a lot. 
All right, Trundle, and then I'm going to wrap it up here in a second. I realize we're getting close to probably 25 minutes, and I don't want this to take too long. Um, so Trundle, very, very strong against super tanks. So if they have Mundo, Nunu, um, Nar, uh, Poppy. Poppy might become a lot more popular after Worlds. Um, I know it's in the semifinals, especially SKT picked Poppy a lot, and Trundle is the classic counter to Poppy. He's very, very good against Poppy and Nunu. So if you see a Trundle and a Nunu in your game, or a, uh, a Nunu or a Poppy in your game, definitely pick. consider picking Trundle, especially if you see two of them. If you see Nunu and Poppy on the same team, definitely go for Trundle. When we start going into this Assassin meta again, tanks are going to become a lot more popular, I think, because tanks usually beat Assassins, and AD carries beat tanks, um, and then Assassins beat AD carries. It's almost like Paper, Rock, Scissors. So if Assassins, people start playing them a lot more, um, you might see tanks coming back into the fold. So, Trundle's very, very good at breaking tanks. He also has certain synergies with specific champions that can interact with terrain. So he's good with Poppy because then she, she can knock people into the pillar, or Vayne can knock people into the pillar. Um, so he has some interactions that are very good that I won't go into all of the interactions, but just suffice to say he's very good at tanks that don't have ways to jump and get around his pillar very easily, um, and that don't have mobility to get away while they're cursed. Because his curse basically makes them into an AD carry. They turn into paper your team will melt them so quickly if you ultimate somebody. So he's very good in certain matchups. Um, Braum is good. I just don't play him a lot. He's fallen out of favor. His mana costs are very, very high early on, so he doesn't have a lot of great poke in lane. Um, he can be good if you have a lot of ranged people. So if they have a Kindred and a Varus middle and like a Jinx bottom, his shield can block all of that, so that's very good. Um, it just requires coordination with your team also. Like... You know, you can shield people, but if they move around or go away from your shield, it's not good. I don't know. He's very good early game. If you want to play him, play him with someone like Lucian, because Lucian's double taps proc his uh, stun faster. Um, and if you have a lot of AD carries on your team that proc his stun faster, that's good. So if you have the Kindred, you have the Varus middle, you have the Jace top. He could be very good with Jace, because Jace has those three quick hits um, that could stun people. So there are certain compositions where he could be very good, but... Um, he's basically good if they have a lot of ranged or if you have a lot of ranged auto attackers to tr proc those stuns because his stuns are very powerful. But if you don't proc them, if you have a bunch of magic users, if you have like a rumble and top and a LeBlanc middle and like a, you know, a Zac in the jungle or something like that, it's going to be really hard to proc those stuns in a fight, um, fast enough. So he's good, but only in heavily ranged compositions, either on your team or against the other team. Okay, and I won't go into all of these. I'll just talk about a couple of the weaknesses and strengths just really quickly. So Thresh, very powerful, has an awesome kit. It requires coordination with your team to use the lantern very well. His hook's fairly easy to dodge for high elo people, has a huge cooldown, and he's basically made of paper because he doesn't scale very well. He does get tanky items, but he's just naturally penalized a lot, a lot. So he's just going to naturally, just for getting items, be a lot less tanky than someone like Alistar and Nautilus. So he's okay, but... I. And he's really hard to play in general. Like, you have to be able to use the flay correctly, the lantern correctly, the hook correctly. Like, there's so many ways you can mess Thresh up. So, I don't think he's worth mastering. I think that at this point, I would, if you like Thresh, I would just play Nautilus. Like, he's very similar, and he's a lot easier to play and a lot more rewarding, a lot more powerful most of the time. Leona can be strong if they leave you alone in a 2v2 lane and you're against something squishy. So, if you're against a Sona in lane or you're against a, a Soraka or a Zyra... Um, Leona can be very powerful, but if their jungler shows up, if they have an early aggression jungler, um, it's going to be a hard time. Or if you fall behind, then you can't really engage. So let's say that your AD carry just gets caught out and killed. You can't really peel for him very much. Um, then you're going to have a hard time. You can't really go save people. So if someone gets caught out in the enemy jungle, you can't go save them because you're probably going to die trying to save them. So she's good at her job. She's good at lock engaging on people, lock down, CC. But she has problems, and she's not good against a lot of other popular champions. Like, she's not good against Alistar, she's not good against Janna, she's not good against Tom Kent, she's okay against Nautilus. But she's very, very situational, I think. Like, she's good at these squishy champions. So if you see a Zyra, a Nami, or a Sona, and you have someone like Illusion on your team that can blow them up early, worth consideration. Okay, Blitzcrank. Um, I know a lot of people like Blitzcrank. I hear a lot of other people that make these tier lists say he should be higher. I don't think so. Um, it, like... If you hit every hook, yes, he's awesome, of course. You're going to get a lot of kills, right? But if you miss the hook, he's worthless. Like, if you miss a hook in lane, they can do whatever they want to you, you know, for the next 20 seconds. And it costs a lot of mana, so he's kind of a one-trick pony, and that's why I don't play him. Like, yes, the hook's powerful throughout the whole game, but 
you're giving up so much pressure if you miss that hook. And decent players will dodge the hook a large percentage of the time. So it's okay. It's okay. Um, yeah, I just don't like him. He's just too one-dimensional. And yeah, he, if things go wrong, they go wrong. Also, if you're losing, once again, he plays hits very hard from behind. So if they have a super tank Zach on their team and you pull the Zach into your team, that's not going to be a good situation. Or Alistar. If you pull Alistar on your team, that's not going to be great. So once again, he's very good if you can hit hooks quite a lot into people like Zyra, Nami, and Sona. But you dang well better hit it because if you miss, your AD carry is not going to get any CS for 20 seconds against a good... Um, you know, a good Nami player, a good Zyra player, because they're just going to walk up, zone them out for 20 seconds until your hook's off cooldown. So he's okay that he's very high risk. And once again, you like him, I would just play Nautilus. Very similar. Nautilus has a good backup plan. You miss the hook, that's fine. You can still stun people if you hit them. You still have your ultimate. You still have your slow. You still have your tankiness. Nautilus has a lot more contingency plans for his missed hooks. And Nautilus can get away. So if you're about to get caught, Nautilus can hook and run away from a bad situation. Blitzcrank can try to run away, but that's not the same as being able to hook yourself away. Soraka, very powerful. Um, if you don't get caught, right? So if they don't have assassins, they don't focus you, they just let you sit in the back and heal as much as you want. Yeah, she's very powerful. But if they have assassins, if they have lockdown, if they have like, you know, Nautilus or... She's pretty good against Alistar, but if they have something like a Nautilus or a Zyra in lane... Um, or a karma to speed into you. I don't like her, but at the same time, I recognize that she's extremely powerful um, in lane. I just feel like I can't make plays. I just can't do a lot of stuff. I just feel like I'm kind of at the mercy of my team when I play Soraka, right? Like I can heal them up, but if they're just making a lot of mistakes, I can't, if they get locked down CC'd, I can't heal through, you know, if they get hit with a Morgana Q and just blown up by other champions, I can't heal through that. Or if they get engaged on by Leona, it's going to be really hard to heal through it. So she has a really hard time healing through heavy burst damage, but she could be good. Tarek, he's okay. I mean, once again, it just requires coordination. A lot of coordination from your team. Like, they have to all bunch up so you can get the ult on them, and they have to know, don't run away when you have this on you because you're about to go invulnerable. So it's really hard to set that up in solo queue with people. His stun's okay. His heal's okay. But everyone does everything better than him. Um... His one thing is he can make everyone invulnerable, but once again, it's really hard to coordinate it. So why not just play something like Janna where you don't have to coordinate it? You just blow everyone else back and heal everyone to full health, and that's basically making them invulnerable, right? Um, so I just I like Janna a lot better. She's just a lot easier to coordinate with the team. Morgana's okay. She has the black shield, but her W is basically worthless. Her Q is good if you hit it, but it's very slow. Um, it's very dangerous to use her ultimate as an engage tool. You have to use your flash, first of all, most of the time. And you have to buy Hourglass, which means you're not buying Locket. You're not buying ZZ. Um, you're not buying all these other items that are way better for supports. You have to go Hourglass with her a lot of times if you want to have any sort of use out of your ultimate. So it's just a lot to sacrifice for someone that... And she's squishy. For someone that's marginally better than at engaging than someone like maybe Nautilus, right? So... She's okay. Bard, similar, very fun to play, very cool, but requires a lot of coordination from your team. Very high skill cap champion, very easy to mess him up. So he's okay. Brand, I fooled around with Brand. He's kind of fun. He does a lot of damage. In place of Brand, Brand you could say something like Lux or Velkaz or just whatever um, you know support you want to play that's like AP carry support. But at the end of the day, they're very squishy. They're not going to get the same kind of money usually as other AP carries, and they don't have a lot of peel most of the time. So he's fun, he does a lot of damage, but I think if you want to do an AP carries type of support, I would just play Zyra. Point blank. She just has a much, it's much easier to hit the Zyra Roos in lane. She has AoE CC later on. Um, she scales just as much in damage as almost anyone else. Um, so I think Zyra is really the pick. And you're picking Zyra for a lot of early game pressure and lots of AP damage scaling. Okay, and the final thing that I wanted to cover, just for kind of uh, newer players, or if you're new to support... Um, the best items that I think to build in solo queue in many games is get a four ward item. It doesn't matter if it's the, uh, the health item. It doesn't matter if it's the ruby crystal item or whatever. It doesn't matter if it's the AP item, whatever it is, get yourself access to four wards immediately because you need to ward a lot. So that's just very, very important. Um, boots, tier two boots quickly. I like boots of swiftness on most of them because it lets you move around the map quickly and get out of hot situations. So if they're trying to CC and focus and target you down, um, boots of swiftness helps you get out of that. If you're with a champion where, and you suspect you're going to need to use a lot of exhaust or a lot of flash 
and you really benefit from CDR quite a lot, then consider Ionian. Or your champion's just naturally very fast. So someone like Janna, for example, I get Ionian a lot because she's already super fast with her W. She benefits from Exhaust a lot um, because you can actually save people from dangerous situations. So if you shield, ult, and Exhaust a Zed, for example, you can actually save them. Whereas, you know, if it's Alistar and Zed ult somebody you know, and does their, his full combo, the exhaust might save him, but they might still die anyways. With Janna, the exhaust can still save people in conjunction with her other stuff. So Ionian, if you need more exhaust, if you're against assassins, if you're against someone who can get to the back line quicker, but Boots of Swiftness, especially if you're one of those champions that has a tough time with the reverse gear, so I'm looking at, you know, Tom Kench and Alistar here. Boots of Swiftness are very, very good. Tom Kench, all the time Boots of Swiftness, because you're not only saving yourself with that, you're often saving your allies. Your allies depend on your move speed in combat most of the time, so you definitely, definitely want Boots of Swiftness every time with Tom Kench. But Ionian's possible with other people. ZZ Rot Portal is extremely powerful in solo queue. I talk about this every time I get it in game, but the reason is... People have a really hard time knowing how to split push correctly in solo queue. And they have a really hard time transitioning to objectives. So if you drop a ZZ in a side lane that helps defend against other split pushers that might be on the other team, and it also lets you prep lanes. So for example, let's say you have a ZZ going bottom. A huge fight breaks out in the middle. Um, you win the fight, but they have some. They have like their wave clear person. They have their Oriana or something defending mid tower. Well, bottom tower because you have a ZZ is already pushed up all the way, so you can just rotate over to bottom tower and go for that tower instead. So it just adds a lot of extra map pressure, gives you easier access to Baron, lets you catch people out. You can bait people a lot with ZZ. So just put a ZZ in a bush somewhere in the bottom lane, sit there with your jungler. I'll guarantee you someone's going to try to come and clear it. Most likely, just catch them out, kill them. So you can bait with the ZZ. It gives you tankiness. It gives you a lot of MR, a lot of armor. It helps you split push without having a split pusher there. It's like having a sixth player on your team. It gives you gold. Every minion that those little creatures kill actually gives you gold. So if you look at ZZ, it'll probably give you 500 gold at some point um, throughout the game. So that means it costs 500 less gold to buy it effectively. Um, it also gives you move speed around towers. That includes towers that have been taken down. And don't underestimate that. I think it's like 20% move speed. It's very fast. So if you're just running up middle lane trying to get somewhere, you're going to be sped up almost the entire way because there's so many towers in middle lane. So it's an extremely powerful item for solo queue, especially at lower ranks. So you'll never see pros get it because they coordinate their... Number one, they coordinate their split pushing a lot better and they have team comps to handle split pushing. But number two you don't have as much money in pro games as a support because the final score might be three to eight or something like that, right? Like there's just not a lot of people die in most pro games. It's a lot tighter of a game. But in solo queue, it's not unusual to see the final score be something like 30 to 40, right? Or 20 to 30, depending on your elo. So that means you're going to get a lot more money because more people are just dying in general. So that's why you can afford luxury items like ZZ Rock Portal that you don't see in pro play a lot. Okay, next, Locket of the Iron Solari, and that's the last one I'm going to talk about. It's very good in most situations because that shield. So it not only gives you MR, which is great against, you know, champions like Rumble, Orianna, other popular champions right now, but it also gives your team a shield. So even if they have a lot of AD and maybe just one MR threat, you can still feel confident that it's going to be a useful item because you still get the shield, it gives you CDR, it gives you health and tankiness, and it's reasonably costed. So unless they have literally an all AD team, Locket can be very, very powerful most of the time. I don't like Frozen Heart as much because its range is very limited. It depends on the support. Um, I will get it with Tom Kench or Nautilus sometimes because they get close um, to people in the fight. They can get close to the AD carry without dying, but overall, I don't like Frozen Heart nearly as much. So these would be the four items I would build with most supports most of the time. If you're just starting out to the game, I highly recommend these runes. They're cheap, and they're good on almost any supports. So I would go Armor armor Reds, Armor Yellows, Magic Resist, Blues, and then two Move Speed Quints, because Move Speed's very good on support, because you're going to have to be placing wards in dangerous situations and moving in and out. Um, and then an Armor Quint. Just because more than two Move Speeds... It's okay, but you're kind of starting to dig into your defensive stats a little bit. So just a lot of armor. Now, you can get health yellows. You'll see me field a lot of health yellows, um, but they're way more expensive. They're like 820 gold or something a piece, I think, for flat health. Um, whereas I think the armor ones are like 210 or something. And they're just marginally better, like just a little bit better in some situations than armor. So just get the armor. It's way better. Um, for the same reason, you know, on Nami, you might see people run with, like, dual pin runes or magic penetration runes. 
those are a lot more expensive than armor reds. I think armor reds are also about 200 apiece, and, <clears throat> you know, the penetration ones are probably at least 400. They're probably 400 something, so. But armor's fine on Nami, right? Like, yeah, you might be able to deal a little bit more damage, but you're going to be getting hit. You're going to be getting hit by auto attacks in lane, so armor's always going to be useful. So I say just get these, and then as you get more gold, or get more um, IP, rather, then you can buy an, these more specialty boutique things. So if you want, you know, scaling blues, or you want some CDR blues, or you want some, you know, magic penetration reds, you can do that. But I know you don't want to spend all of your money on runes if you're new to the game. You need to do it because they're the most powerful thing you can buy. You should buy runes ASAP, tier 3 runes. But I know you don't want to spend all your money on runes. You want to get some champions. That's the fun part of the game. So just get this rune page. And then as you get more IP, you can slowly accumulate more runes over time. I have 20 rune pages as support. I have almost every rune you can possibly imagine. But I've been playing for like five years. Five years, I think, now. So I've played a lot of League of Legends. So don't think you have to do that right away. Now, I will say when runes go on sale, the two-for-one rune page, spend all of your IP on that as much as you possibly can stomach because that's such a good bargain. You're basically getting 6,300 free runes because you will want a lot of rune pages eventually. So definitely buy that. If they ever go on sale again, two for one, drop all your money on that. All of your imaginary money. Don't go out and spend just a crap load of real money. I don't even think you can buy rune pages with real money. Maybe you can. I don't know. I bought mine with IP. You probably can. You probably can with RP, but don't do it unless there's a sale. And finally, the last two supports, I would recommend buying just Janna and Alistar. They're my S-Class supports, and they only cost $13.50. They're really good. Um, they're fairly simple to play at a basic level, and they're very rewarding if you play them correctly. You get that awesome combo. It's so much fun. You get that Janna Tornado to stop and engage. That's a ton of fun. Um, so I think they're very rewarding. They're easy to pick up. Fairly difficult to master, um, but that's what you want, right? You want a fun, good challenge to support. You can play a lot. You're never going to get bored with them. They can make plays. Um, and they're really cheap. You don't want to buy supports that cost more than $3150. I'll tell you that right now. Don't buy those 4800 supports. Don't buy the 6300 supports. Just wait. Wait until they go on sale if you want to buy them that way. Um, or just wait until you get more of the cheaper champions. Because, you know, let's say you buy 6300 Tom Kinch. He's really cool. I'm always talking about how awesome Tom Kinch is. And then they just nerf him next patch or something, right? And then you're just going to feel terrible. That happened to me early on. I forgot who it was a long, long time ago. It was like Vladimir or something I bought for 6300 I was like, oh, yeah, he's awesome. He's a ton of fun. He, I see him winning a lot, and then they nerf him next patch. And then I'm just like, <laughs> you know, I'm so exasperated because I just spent all of my hard-earned IP on this new champion, and now he was terrible. So do yourself a favor. Just buy the cheaper champions. I know there might be some sexy, fun, expensive champions out there. Um, but trust me, just buy the cheap ones first, learn them, and then over time, buy more of the other ones. So that's my advice to you. These are the two best candidates. Soraka can also be pretty good. Um, I think Sona was 3100 That's a lot. I think Soraka would be the only other one I'd recommend, but I, I don't like her for the reasons I described, but you can play her if you want. I think she's very easy to play, and I don't think her skill cap is very high. So she can, in my opinion... She could potentially get boring. I don't mind playing her. I think she's okay. I just don't play her for... I don't think she's as strong as other options. But I think I could see people potentially getting bored with her playstyle after a while. Whereas these two, I think these two will be very fun to master. They're fun, they're very powerful, and they're cheap. And that's you know what I would recommend for a new player. So hope this helps you out. Whether you're a new player, you've been playing for a long time, feel free to leave some comments. You know, If you think that I left somebody out or you'd like to hear me talk more about a specific champion... Um, just let me know and I'm more than happy to let you know. I love having a great conversation with people about this or you want to know build orders or specific um, items for specific champions, just let me know. I also have videos for almost all of these champions somewhere on the channel. I don't have a lot of some of these B-class champions, um, but I have a ton of the top ones and I have quite a few of most of these. I don't have a lot of Karma. I'll probably try to play her more soon. I don't have a lot of Braum. Um, but I'm going to get more Trundle soon. I have a decent amount. I've got some decent Sona, Nami, Zyra. Um, and then I'm sure I have other ones as well that I'm not... I may be forgetting a support here. I don't know. It's kind of late. I've been traveling all day. Um, so I may have forgotten something. But this is just off the top of my head. I think this is the most powerful stuff. And I explained why. So thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this, be sure to watch, out, watch the videos as well. I have series, like I said, for most of these supports. And a lot for some of them. So I have a lot of Janna, a lot of Alistar, a lot of Nautilus, a lot of Tom Kench. So... 
those are the best and I have a lot of ways for you to learn about them. So check out the channel and that's going to be it. Um, I'll do another one of these in the preseason when they make some big changes. Let me know what you think about this. Do you like me doing this? Um, is this format okay? Or do you want to see more like video interaction where I show clips of different champions? I'll try to do that in the future. I know watching text is not the most fun thing in the world, but I'll try to do that in the future. But let me know if you like these tier list kind of things with the explanations. Let me know about the length. I know we're going on like 30 minutes and some change. I could do them faster, but this is my first one. And I just really wanted to break it down in depth so you understand. So it's not just one or two reasons. Oh, this guy's the best for this reason. Um, I wanted to be very specific so that you understand how and when to pick these champions in a different compositions. And I explain that in all the videos as well that you'll see with this, why I'm picking it, why I think it'll be good into certain compositions. Some of the problems with my pick um, as the game unfolds. So if I pick Zyra early, I'll explain why. If we're losing the game, I'll explain why I think Zyra is not as good into this composition, for example. So... Thank you very much. That's going to be it. Have a wonderful evening, and I'll see you next time.